I've been asked a lot of questions, and I thought that we would use this program to answer some of these questions, not all of them, but uh, I think they would be of general interest to many people. One person has asked, what should I do with my ego? I can see that it is getting in the way of my spiritual development. Well, ego is the a uh, thing that you have to deal with is the only thing you've got to deal with in your whole life. And uh, so it's important to understand the question. The thing is that you are not your ego. You are the uh, essence of spirit who has dreamed your existence, and you have arranged around that little dream all sorts of self-definitions, such as I'm a woman, I'm a man, I'm American, I'm Italian, um, I like scrambled eggs, I don't like uh, bacon, whatever it might be. And uh, we find that these things get in the way because the purpose of self-realization is, uh, that's the goal of life as I have defined it, is to know that your true self is God. The true self is he who, like the gas underneath the burners on a stove, it's one field of gas producing many little uh, burners. And each of those little, little jets of flame can be at even a different color if you put chemicals on it and so on. And so those chemicals would be like the, uh, like the burden of self-definitions that we carry. Some openings can be bigger, some are much smaller, and so the flame might be high, it might be very low, and some people have lots of energy, some have very little. But everything that you express is a part of that infinite consciousness that it is allotted to you and that you can draw on. So the ego is not only a, a barrier, but it's also an, an aid. If we use it rightly, it's a very important question. How do we use our egos? Not, ju not just what should I do with my ego, but how can we um, use our ego to grow spiritually? Well, inasmuch as we are not just this ego, but that we are the spirit which infuses and informs all egos, then uh, it means that the more we can expand our ego to include other egos, the more fulfillment we have, the more we shrink inward upon our little ego, the less fulfillment we have. Selfish people are never happy people. Unselfish and self-giving people are always happy. And this is an example how you can use your ego to grow spiritually, and it's the, it gives you the supreme motive for Morality. Morality is not thou shalt not and thou shalt. Morality is simply understanding those things that will give you fulfillment. You're the only thing you have to deal with, as I said before. So you've got to find out how you can find fulfillment. You will find more fulfillment, as I said, when you can expand your sympathies by giving, by surrender, by humility, Humility does not mean self-abasement. It means knowing that God is doing everything through you. And the way to do that is to give everything to him. You have to act, but give the fruits of your action to God. The um, uh, ego, again, can be worked on not necessarily by deflating it. People think, and some teachers think, that the purpose of a uh, disciple the, their training of a disciple is deflate the ego. Well, deflated or not, it's still there, whether it's a shriveled little hunk of rubber on the floor or a big giant balloon, it's still there. The thing is to get rid of it. As my guru said, it is not good to have either a superiority or an inferiority complex. What you need to do is see God as the doer in everything. And the more you can give it to him, and one technique, though, is a very good one, and that is to constantly um, 
Learn to laugh at any sense of self-importance you might have. Most people try to boost their egos by thinking they're good at something. I think it's far better. I found it to be very helpful to me. And in fact, it enables me to do things much better than I could otherwise. To say, well, I can't do anything. But God can do anything. And so if I ask him to inspire me, I find that melodies, truths, ideas, all sorts of inspirations come to me, which never used to come when I thought in terms of what can I say, what can I do, what do I want. You'll find that in this way it's much more fulfilling because you'll be able to accomplish a lot more. But when you're in a crowd, for example, don't try to push yourself. Don't try to hide yourself. But th I think the answer to it is think in terms not of receiving, but of giving. When you, re when you give of yourself, when you focus on what you're doing and not on you as the person doing it, then you can overcome the, the ego. And uh, uh, you have to have an ego whether you like it or not. That's all you've got, as I said, to work with. And so the thing is to use it in the right way. Even a great master has to have some ego to keep his body moving and to keep his brain thinking. Even at that, he knows that God is the true doer. And uh, you will find more freedom in yourself if you say, God, it is your inspiration, it is your power. As Yogananda used to pray and tell us to pray, I will reason I will will, I will act, but guide thou my wisdom, my um, reason, will, and activity to the right path in everything.